Mark Rogers, TV talking college football, and it's talk to, time to talk uh, Miami. We bring in a Cam Underwood from State of the U to talk the Canes up, and it's a it's a dead time in the college football year. But Cam, we always have something to talk about, and there's a few things going on on campus. Eleven early enrollees, of course, uh, took part in spring practice. Now we get that next wave of guys uh, with eleven early enrollees, but. Uh, now some more guys are able to take part and start to get into the mix. Yeah, so it's been a while, but good to be back. And uh, speaking of uh, being back or around Miami, like you said, uh, as we record today on Sunday, May the 21st, uh, we have the move-in day for the first group of non-enrollees. So your normal enrollees, uh, because summer A session at Miami starts tomorrow on the 22nd. So uh, a little bit of, you know, Usually, you know, we try to just kind of record things and not say, okay, today's date or anything, but it matters because they're moving in today and classes start tomorrow. Um, and right before uh, we came on to record this video, Peter Ariz of canesinsight.com, a uh, contributor to Miami Herald. Uh, you've probably seen or heard his name before. He's the guy who broke the Mark Richt hire uh, last year. Um, he put out there, or reported, I should say, uh, that all of the summer A session enrollees, excuse me, uh, are enrolled and qualified, and that matters because you know you don't want to have attrition for grade issues uh, from your your group of signees. So, um, the people who are now on campus, Nikosi Perry, your quarterback, um, my favorite quarterback. I want him to be the quarterback of the future. I think he's great, uh, but he's on campus. Jeff Thomas, the wide receiver from East St. Louis, Illinois, the one who, if you watched the Under Armour All American game, was making everybody look stupid because he's so fast and good, um, and. He's the one, and I guess I'll stop here. He's the one who there were questions about because of academics. And I don't know if you remember my previous videos or have read the article, but basically his uh, junior year of high school, he got kicked off the team uh, for behavior issues and for academics. So he was, you know, first team All-State or second team All-State as a freshman, first team All-State as a sophomore, junior year, played a couple games, got kicked off the team, got kicked out of the Under, Arm Under Armour All-American game but earned his way back, fixed his behavior, got his grades on track and everything. But people were saying, okay, well, he's a borderline academic case. He might not actually qualify because his grades in his junior year were so bad. Da, da, da. But it was reported then at that time when he committed to Miami and through the Under Armour All-American game back in uh, December, January, around New Year's, that Jeff Thomas did everything he needed to do to be on track to graduate and enroll uh, at any school. And people were doubting that. But as Ariz uh, reported today that he and all the signees are on campus. So that's a win for Miami. Um, and I actually tweeted out recently, uh, well, today I had that conversation, that every year for the last four years, Miami has been able to get in about one borderline academic case, a kid who in high school you might think eh, his grades aren't necessarily the greatest, but find a way for him to do his stuff, first of all, because you're not fixing grades, but they were able to work with him or these guys and then get an academic plan together where they can be successful and then enroll at Miami. 2014, that was Treon Gray and Tyree Brady, who has since Brady uh, transferred to Marshall. 2015 was Robert Knowles, who's a safety, who's probably going to play this year. 2016, last year, that was Deontay Mullins, who missed his whole senior year because of great issues. And now 2017, Jeff Thomas. So, you know, it's about, it's a little bit over one. It's one, one and one point four one and a half, one and a quarter, whatever it is. Um, so, yeah, five guys in the last four years uh, to be kind of borderline academics who got in, including Jeff Thomas, which is the biggest win in this recruiting cycle for Miami. Also joining uh, Perry and Thomas, Mike Harley from St. Thomas Aquinas. He's awesome. He's fast. He's another wide receiver. Um, grad transfer from the Citadel, D. Delaney, who could have been about a you know fourth-round, fifth-round NFL draft pick this year, decided he was going to come back to school uh, to elevate his draft stock and seeing how that worked with Adrian Colbert, uh, who was like an undrafted guy previously at Texas, really didn't play much, came over and ends up getting drafted. D. Delaney is coming down to Miami to see if he can get, you know, second, maybe third round draft pick status. So that's pretty cool because that's an NFL caliber guy who comes into our secondary. So we need that. Joining him, Javante Dean is a Juco transfer from Blinn College in Texas. Originally from Homestead, uh, South Dade High School, uh, really developed over his two years in JUCO. He's 6'2", with, runs in the four threes, uh, so very fast, very dynamic, and he's going to play along with Delaney at cornerback. Uh, also at cornerback, Trajan Bandy, uh, your favorite signee. I've said it a million times. He owns Sean Taylor's Game Worn Fiesta Bowl. Uh, oh, sorry, yeah, Fiesta Bowl uh, jersey and that uh, 
red flare uh, visor that is so iconic that Sean Taylor had. Trajan Bandy owns those. He's a lifelong Hurricane. He's on campus as well. Kyleon Herbert from American Heritage is a left tackle prospect who's uh, – on campus as well. He's going to challenge for playing time this year as a freshman as well. He's a little bit, or he was lighter in high school, but he's up around 305 pounds ish. So getting that weight on him is a good thing. Corey Gaynor from Stoneman Douglas is here uh, also as well. This kid is mean in a good way. He's going to play, I think, early. Some people want him to be the starting center from day one because he's physical and he can move uh, in the run game. Uh, and recently on the website, our X's and O's guy, Justin Tatavio, Iron Man Football, he wrote a thing, and we had talked about this, he and I, about what elements of the run game Mark Richt might add to the Canes offense, and looking back at what was done at Georgia. Now, I know that Rick did not call plays at the end of his tenure at Georgia, as somebody you know pointed out, but to say that he had no interaction or, or buy into the offense is just foolhardy. Like he's a quarterback. He'd been offensive coordinator. You know, he, his Mark Rick's thing is offense. So to sit there and say, well, Mike Sanford called what he wanted to Mike Bobo, they ran whatever they wanted to run. Irrespective of what um, Mark Rick wanted to do on offense. Come on. That doesn't make any kind of sense, but read the piece. There's some really good stuff on there. And if you look at the part about, you know, moving offensive linemen and pulling and, you know, those kind of things, I think that's where Gaynor could really be an asset. So maybe he can earn his way into playing time. We'll see. Zelante Hillary is another guy who's hitting campus today. He reunites with early enrollee DJ Dallas, who was his uh, high school teammate, uh, who already, you know, he's a wide receiver, already participated in spring practice. Hillary is a good player. Uh, he was first team all state in their classification in Georgia, uh, 6'6, 280, 285 at offensive tackle. Uh, might need a red shirt before he's really ready uh, to play at this level, but has very good talent. Um, Derek Smith from Trinity Christian in Jacksonville is another guy uh, who's on campus. He's big, um, 6'2, about 190 pounds, give or take. Um, and yeah, there's a video in the recruiting notebook that I did on National Signing Day about him where the first play, he absolutely just baptizes his kid up the sideline. Probably would have been targeting in, in college uh, if you look at it, but it just evident, uh, yeah, further evidence of his physicality, which is something that the coaches definitely want at uh, the defensive back slot. So those are all the guys who um, are hitting campus today, enrolling, and then, uh, yeah, they're just going to get in the academic program, obviously, because, you know, you have to take classes over the course of summer, and they're going to take a couple more classes, hopefully, um, in summer A and B sessions so that their load in the fall, their class load, is not as heavy as it could be. You know, most students take 15, 18, 21 credits during the fall, um, you know, during because they're only there for fall and spring semesters. But the football players have a chance to do a little bit of academic, you know, work in the summer to work ahead where they can take the 12 credit minimum. Um, in the football season to allow them to, you know, be in the weight room and, you know, do those things, be, in, you know, not be in class all the time. And I know that, you know, everybody talks about being a scholar athlete. You do need to do both things, but let's be real. Football is a full-time job. You know, you have all these meetings, you have all these things, and it's not going to be a thing where you can only do the minimum and be successful. Like it's, it's like anything else. You know, I, was a music major in college and I went to the practice room all the time and I played my piano and I sang my songs and I did my things outside of the bounds of class. So to better myself in my area of skill, football players do the same thing. I mean, they're going to do their homework. They're going to do all those things, but also they're going to better themselves in their area of skill, which happens to be football. So that means they're going to run. They're going to lift. They're going to be in the meeting room. They're going to be with their playbooks, quarterbacks and wide receivers going to be on the field, getting extra reps. So they get their timing on all of their routes and things like that. So, you know, having only 12 credits is a beautiful thing and they can take only 12 credits because they're doing the work in the summer. So got a lot of guys coming in now. Um, five other guys are coming in later for summer B session, which I believe is uh, July 3rd enrollment date. Um, and just a quick list of those. That's DJ Johnson from Sacramento, the most offered player in America, the last recruiting cycle. Um, defensive end 6'5", 240, ran 11'3", or something in the 100, uh, in his last 100-meter dash uh, for the track team, uh, his high school. Evidence Njoku, this is David Njoku's younger brother, who's about 6'6", 200 pounds, or a wide receiver. They just have a later uh, graduation date in New Jersey, so he'll be coming down uh, at that time, Jonathan Ford, a D tackle from Fort Lauderdale. Uh, he's going to come down for summer B session as well. DeAndre Wilder from Carroll City, a linebacker, very fast guy. He's going to come down at that same time. And your last guy, Zach Fiegels, who is a Canes legacy. Jeff Fiegels, his father, uh, punted in the NFL for 20 or 25 or 40 seasons or whatever it was. But he's coming down 
uh, from New Jersey at that same time. So a lot of guys on campus right now or today, they're moving in, seeing all those tweets at the timeline. Five other guys coming on July 3rd. So, yeah, just uh, building – Getting the whole class in is a good thing because we need that talent and they can start to get integrated into the uh, the system, you know, nutritionally, academically, physically, uh, you know, and on their knowledge base in the area of a football. And, you know, hopefully we'll see some of those guys make some impact plays in this fall. We interviewed Evidence yeah. Joku about two months ago. So if you'd like to check out that interview on Mark Rogers TV, just uh, type in the search Evidence Njoku and you should be able to find that interview.